Buongiorno, everybody. Today, um, as it's been the past few days here in New Jersey, is a gloomy, gloomy day. Um, but we're going to brighten it up a little bit with some sunshine. So I'm a little more with it today than I was yesterday. I'm all put together. Just thought I'd let you know that. But I have a bowl full of lemons. So we're going to make actually three different we're going to do three different things with these lemons right now first thing we're going to do is something that's going to make us happy in a little less than two weeks um so we will have some cream of limoncello ready in time for easter because this is a shorter quicker recipe um we're going to get it started today so if you have lemons get them out but if you don't have lemons, if you have any citrus at all, if you've got lemons, limes, oranges, grapefruits, you can make a limoncello, an orange cello. I guess, I don't know what you'd call a grapefruit cello. But anyway, we're going to find out all the good names for them. But you can make a liqueur out of pretty much any of these. So we're going to do it with lemons because that's what I've got a bunch of. And before they go bad, I'm using up stuff here in the house as we are all trying to do. So that's why we're going lemon today. Um, so the first thing you do. And of course, I know in New Jersey, we're fortunate enough for alcohol um, stores to be considered essential. So if you can get your hands on some grain alcohol, that's awesome. If you cannot, you can substitute vodka because um, it's a clear, not too strongly flavored liquor. But um, otherwise, if you can get your hands on some Everclear or something of the sort, it works best. So we're going to start with... I would say normally your average bottles, this is the big one, obviously, because I do this often. Um, your average bottles are 750 milliliters, so we're going to do a 750 milliliter recipe. Um, there are a million recipes online. This is a way to flavor, a make a liqueur that is with what you've got. So if you have six lemons or eight lemons or ten lemons, use them all up. So I'm going to pour in here 700, and you know what? I'm going to take this little pour spout off because it's pointless. There we go. Ta-da! I guess most people don't drink grain alcohol in high quantities all at one time. All right, so lucky for me, my jar here has measures on it. So that's, that's 750 milliliters. Your average quart size mason jar is 750 milliliters completely, but... If you're going to put lemon rinds in it, you're going to want something bigger than your quart jar. So um, because I have these really huge lemons, look at the size of these babies. Um, I'm going to do a thousand milliliters just because I can. But, you know, your average bottle is fine. And I'm going to save this for the next round. Excuse me. Okay. So the key to making... Good limoncello is making sure that when you peel the skin off, you get none of the white on the inside. You really want just the yellow part of the skin. The white is the pith. Isn't that the worst word, pith? It's so pathetic, pith. Anyway, okay, so you want none of the white because that adds to a bitterness. You really want the sweetness of the lemon, so you really just want a thin, 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 paper thin. You feel like you're wasting, you're not using enough of it, but believe me, there's so much flavor in this little thinness. Okay, see? None of this. Now, if you're not good, and if you don't have a good paring knife, like my little French paring knife here, if you don't have a good paring knife, you can use a peeler, but even a peeler can get the white, so you got to be really careful. So all you do today or tomorrow, but get this done. If you're going to do this, do it today or tomorrow. Actually, you shouldn't put it right in there because, yeah, I know, my, my face is itching. Okay, hold on. Good thing I have a towel over there. Okay, so um, peel as much of this as you can. Do it today or tomorrow. If you do it today or tomorrow with lemons or oranges, you're going to have a nice cream liqueur for Easter. You can give it as a gift. You can drink it yourself. And again, you drink it in little teeny, teeny things. Look at I'm pretty good with this knife. These knives are nice, nice and thin. You know, the thicker the knife blade sometimes, the harder it is to cut thin. 
This is a nice thin blade. I mean, I can actually see through that. And that's the way you want it. So I'm not going to spend time doing all of this right now. But you're going to, if you can get your hands on six to eight good sized lemons. If they're smaller, I have a couple. Actually, even my small one's not that small, although it's kind of. Um, your regular size ones, I would say go at least eight, maybe ten, the smaller lemons. Um, if you've got big ones, six to eight is fine. And and honestly, anything, it's just going to infuse it with more. If you have nine lemons, then use them, you know. So that is what you're doing with your outside of your lemons, okay. Actually, I'm going to finish this one because I'm going to need the juice of it. So now after you have made limoncello with the skin, you need to do, what are you going to do with this? white lemon that will not last very long without the outer protective covering. So one of the things I do, which I'm going to show you in just a minute, as soon as I finish this, is um, I make ice cubes. So we're going to, we're going to peel, I mean, we're going to uh, slice in half this lemon. It's just about done here. We're going to juice it. Now, I really try to get every last little spot even down here on the little nubs um every piece of skin i can get off because that every little bit is a little more flavor to add to my limoncello you know it's actually limoncello l-i-m-o-n so please please when you write it l-i-m because this is an italian liqueur so you might as well spell it right okay so it may not look like much this is the skin of one lemon. And I'm going to fill this up. And it's going to look all pretty. And you're going to use all your lemons. Fill this up. You're going to cover it. Just put it aside for the next week and a half. Okay? So, salute almost. And just so you know, make a point to get organic lemons. My daughter's over here came down to get her breakfast. Yes, she did. Okay. So make sure you get organic lemons and make sure you still wash them off. Yes, here she is with her egg sandwiches that I so kindly made for her just before I came on here. Okay. So I have my juicer. While these are still just done, and this is still nice and firm, because if you're good enough with that peeling and you've only taken off the little outer skin, it's still pretty firm and still easy enough to juice. So I'm just going to cut this in half, and I'm going to juice this. Which eventually I'll do with all of them. Okay, down and see, nice thick. Still plenty of peel to hold on to without it falling apart in your hand. Still a little more slippery <laughs> than um, and if you need to like put a towel on it and do it that way, it holds it much better. Okay, got all my lemon out. That's garbage. Okay. So now I've got oh, that big lemon. I got, uh, wow, 60 milliliters or got two ounces of juice out of that one big lemon. So what I would normally do is take an ice cube tray, just pour this in, make little ice cubes, and then once they're frozen, take them out, put them in a Ziploc bag, and you've got them, you're having a bottle of water, a glass of water, throw a cube in, gives it that nice little natural, organic, fresh lemon flavor. And it picks you up. It makes you feel so much more cheerful. Now, I'm not making ice cubes right this second because we're going to use this lemon juice. <clears throat> we are going to make a cake. Now, I like making things where you don't need um, the mixer. I love, love my big mixer. But sometimes you just want to whip something up quick. And this is quick and easy. So let me move my lemons. I take that back. I need one lemon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first things first. This is an, an Italian ricotta lemon cake or lemon ricotta cake, however you want to put first things. So we're going to start out with three eggs. And you know me, I usually put them in something else first. So we're going to mix the sugar and the eggs first. Now, you know me also. One of my favorite things to do, 
I always put a little less sugar than any recipe calls for. And I have modified this recipe to be my own. Okay, three eggs. Now, normally most recipes call for anywhere from, you know, a cup to a cup and a half of sugar in your average cake. In fact, every American cake I've ever come across recipes all call for a cup and a half. So I always drop it down to a cup. This cake, in fact, originally I think only had a cup and a quarter. I still only put a cup. So first thing we're going to do is mix one cup. And you know what? If it's a little light of a cup, I never worry about that because I prefer it being a little light. So you can use a regular, regular whisk or a flat whisk. I like my flat whisk sometimes. We're just going to mix the sugar and the eggs very quickly. Get the sugar all in there. All nice and mixed. Okay, and now we're going to, um, let's see if I can remember what I'm doing next. Okay, we are, now this recipe also can be made one other ingredient two different ways. You can use butter. If you're using regular butter, obviously you'd use a mixer, but this recipe actually calls for melted butter originally. But a lot of the cakes that we make in Italy, we don't use butter, We at least in the South. We use oil and oftentimes your basic regular olive oil even. Um, I'm not going to use my olive oil today. I'm using sunflower oil because I'm trying to save my, uh, my olive oil and I have lots and lots of sunflower oil. But we are putting in three quarters. Let me double check myself. Yeah, I'm right. See, I remember my recipe. I know my recipes, most of the ones I do all the time, but honestly, I double check. I don't want to screw up. Just like I left the uh, baking powder off the recipe the other day on the writing, but I fixed it. Okay, so three quarter cup of oil. We're gonna put this in and mix it all up. It's also a little less fat. You know, sunflower oil doesn't quite have as much fat in it as butter. Butter tastes good, but believe me, you're not gonna miss it in this recipe. But we're putting some ricotta in here. So now we're going to get our ricotta ready. We're also going to, at this time, so I had one of my small lemons. I didn't wanna, I'm not gonna use a whole lot because I'm actually adding lemon juice to this recipe. So this recipe originally was only lemon zest. I've added lemon juice to it because I like it even more lemony. So we are gonna put the zest, and this one is one of my small lemons that I had already accounted for taking out of my, my limoncello but I still get the juice out of it. So we are, I'm gonna zest probably most of this lemon. You only ever wanna zest, that's why I turn it very quickly. A couple swipes and get the yellow off and make sure you don't get the white in because that's the bitterness. But the outside is the sweetness. Okay, a little bit more. I still have about a quarter of it. I'm going to throw in the limoncello. That was actually, that actually came a lot out. Make sure you always get what's left on the inside here. Excuse the noise. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to add my lemon juice. Mix this up really good. Okay. And now we're going to use about a cup and a half of ricotta. So I've got my ricotta here, which I was lucky enough to get. Okay, so that's one cup. And a half. So not getting, not dirty two cups. I'm just filling this baby. Halfway. Okay. There we go. If you only have a cup of ricotta, or if you want to do something else with your ricotta, then use a cup. Not a big deal in these kind of recipes. Okay. So now, mixing this in. This is a good recipe for the kids to cook too, because again, it's quick, it's easy, and you only need a bowl and a spoon or a whisk or a spatula. Oh, that looks so pretty and creamy. Look at that. 
Wait, I have to just. Oh, it tastes like lemon cream. Okay, don't worry, that pinky's not going in the batter again. <laughs> All right, now we're going to add our flour. So we're adding two and a half cups of flour. I don't usually use these little things, but my big thing was so in the way. Okay, one. Actually, I kind of measured this out already. <laughs> Two. Ta da! And a half. Yeah, I did measure it out. I could have just dumped it in, huh? Okay, flour. Now, before I mix the flour in, I'm putting in two teaspoons of baking powder. One, two, okay, and adding a pinch of salt. Well, actually, that was kind of a scant pinch. Okay, and now gently kind of mixing my dry stuff on top of the pile here, and now I'm mixing it all together. That's called the cheat way. You know, instead of using another bowl to put the dry stuff and just kind of put it on top of the wet stuff, just kind of stir it around a little. I know it's a cheat, but it works. Very simple, yummy batter it is just about done. You don't want to overbeat it just until it's all the flour is incorporated. Okay, and that's it. Now, all we're doing now is we're taking a bunt pan. So you can use this kind, you know, you can use um, your regular one that's like a regular bunt um, that has the little pretty designs on the side. I had this one handy, so this is the one I'm using. Okay, we're going to grease and flour this with a little bit of oil. I'm going to use that instead of butter. I could smear butter around the inside, but if I'm not using butter already, why break open a stick? This is my um, little pump, so I'm using my own, so I'm not using any aerosol stuff which sometimes I do, but I prefer not to. Okay, and I'm just gonna spray the inside of my pan. Don't forget to spray the little tube in the middle. Okay, and I'm gonna just use my wonderful hand here to And put just a little bit of flour. Now make sure the middle, like I said, make sure the middle. So I kind of start around the middle, just kind of throwing it in there. And then I shake it all around. Just be careful with these ones where the bottom comes out. Okay. You know how to do this? So you just kind of. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Make sure it doesn't. Maybe I should just hold this and go around. There we go. All right, so I'm trying to show you something. That's what happens. That's all right. Usually when you're in your own kitchen, you're not necessarily showing anybody anything. <laughs> hey, you know what? Let's cheat a little. Okay, so now I've got my greased and floured pan. So much easier in a pan that the bottom doesn't come out of. And we're just going to put this batter in here. Start over this side. It's a nice thick batter. And you're just going to move this around. A little bit more in here. Okay, I hate wasting. So we're getting Mr. Piggy out. Hate to waste, no waste. Gotta get all the batter. Look at that's another whole cupcake's worth of batter on the sides. These do make great cupcakes. It comes out really nice in a loaf pan. If you wanna make two of them, just put, just divide this batter into two loaf pans, and then you got one to keep and one to gift. Move this out. So when you're done, so you can have a nice piece of lemon cake with some lemon water during the daytime, 
or you can have some nice lemon cake with some limoncello sometime anytime after lunch. Okay, so that's it. That's the lemon ricotta cake. It comes up about you know two inches on the sides here. I'm gonna bake this um, at like probably 375. I hate baking on 350 for some reason. I know it's better supposedly. I'm gonna cook it on 375 for a good half hour, 45 minutes um, until you know the proverbial toothpick comes out clean. And then we're going to enjoy it. So later on this afternoon or whenever this is done, I'll come on for a five minute live and show you how it, how it looks in the end. So just for the heck of it, just because I've got nothing else better to do. So now in the meantime, we're doing really great. I actually got a lot of things done here in this half an hour. So we made, we started some limoncello. We um, made some lemon ice cubes or started to anyway, and we've made a lemon cake and we watched Angelina come up and have her breakfast. While she's upstairs studying so I hard. I'm gonna go back to bed. You go back to bed? Yeah. Oh, with my baby. Well, guess what we're gonna have later? Lemon cake. Lemon ricotta cake. I know you like, like spinach makes. So anyway, and then she can pick the lemon off the uh, the lemon zester there, lemon grind, mm -hmm. the lemon juicer. Okay. So anyway, so that's that. So um, we're going to. I'm just gonna put this in the oven, and we are in one minute going to meet up with my friend Lynn, who's gonna tell us some cool things to do while you're sipping your, eating your cake and sipping your limoncello. These are all things today to brighten your day and make you more cheerful. And she's gonna show us some other ways to uh, get calm. Hold on. I'm here really quickly because I promised I would come back on and show you guys the end of the cake. No sense in making you wait for all that time just to listen to me chat, chat, chat too much. Um, but the cake is done. The lemon ricotta cake. Look at this beautiful brown crust on top. So I'm just going to take this out. And yeah, I could have done it already just to show you, but I really want to show you the whole process. So obviously this comes out nice. Now I'm just going to very gently, you're doing this with me, I'm just going to turn this upside down and put it on this. Oh, nice and hot. Actually not too hot. And now I'm just going to take the whole thing. Oh my God, you can sm totally smell the lemon. And flip it onto the, onto my, my beautiful, beautiful platter here. It is great just like it is, but it makes it pretty, especially if you have some company. Just sprinkle a little powdered sugar on top. Look how pretty that is, isn't it? Now guess what we're gonna do now? We're gonna taste it. So I'm going to, oh, this is sinful. I really need to take a picture of it. Hold on. This really came out beautiful. And I have to say that you guys are with me in documenting this today. So I'm gonna take a picture of it because then I'll have it to put out there and you guys can see. Wow, it's so pretty. Oh, it does say a clean lens makes for a better photo. Hmm, I think it's got some flour on the lens. Let's try it again. Oh, and the plate's so pretty. Let's do it from this angle. Okay, done. All right, let's cut this. Now this is still warm. Oh my God, wait, you guys, you know how I always say, you can totally smell the lemon in this ricotta cake. Mm whole house smells good I had to go outside for a minute and come back in because you know how like when you're cooking and you're in the middle of it all you don't really smell it until you leave and come back in and you're like oh wow oh so of course if you let this cool off I let it cool off enough that I can touch it but you want to cut this gently it's a nice you know it's a ricotta cake so it's a nice dense cake oh my gosh it's almost like the density of like a of like a pound cake. Look at this. Woo, it's hot. Hold on. <laughs> it's warm, but I am gonna cut a piece off. Look at the it's got such a nice spongy density to it. It's definitely a little bit of a heavy cake. It's not your little, you know, piddly fluffy thing. Mmm. You know. 
because I lessened the sugar in it, it's got just enough sweetness, but you can taste a little bit of the hint, the lemon. You almost get more of the lemon in the smell, but it's just such a nice moist cake. Got the nice, I love how the edges have a little crisp to them. This is definitely a cake you can have all by itself. It doesn't need a glaze or a thick icing. Mmm. Uh, oh, wow. The lemon is almost, the flavor is almost a little bit more concentrated in the crust. Mmm. That was really good. Well, now that you have seen me make a cake, seen me enjoy it, um, make one yourself because this is good. So, enjoy. So, we are now at the second part of our show. I cannot believe I told my friend Lynn, who's going to tell us about some cool essential oils, oh, around 11.30. Do you believe we did all that in just 23 minutes? Pretty cool. Here's So, here comes Lynn. This is my friend Lynn. Hold on. Hi, Lynn. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, How are you? I'm good. How about you? I am great. And it's so funny that you were making all lemon things because the first oil I was going to talk about <laughs> so funny is lemon. Awesome. Yeah. And one of the reasons being is that I'm going to, you and I discussed what we were going to discuss here today and we decided um, kind of how to help people with their emotions during this time that we're in, you know, there's some, anxiety, some sadness, uncertainty. Um, we're lucky that we're heading into spring, but the weather outside is a, been a little gloomy and rainy. So lemon or any of the citrus oils, just like you were saying with your um, limoncello, is you can use any citrus. Yep. And I always call, like I have lemon here, I have um, orange, just like you were saying, great. <laughs> all of those um, citrus flavors to me are sunshine in a bottle. That's what I call them. Um, I have my diffuser going next to me and I have lemon and peppermint in it because um, it is kind of peppermint helps wake you up and perk you up and make you alert. Um, and lemon also is great for uplifting your emotions and um, it's also good when you pair the two for concentration and focus. So everybody who is working from home, that's a good one. Um, all of the kids that are being homeschooled, that's a great one to diffuse when the kids are working or you're working or just you know to keep everybody up and moving. So I, I do love the lemon. I do too. And you know, you call that lemon the sunshine in a bottle, and I call my limoncello sunshine in a the bottle. There you go. Inside <laughs> and out, baby. Inside <laughs> and out. The best. Um, so citruses are great. And I'm going to, I have my diffuser going actually. It's perfect. Yeah, I'm going to give you full space here for a second. Yeah. So this is the diffuser, and I have my lemon and I have my peppermint in it. Um, so I like to keep that going, especially on a day like today. And then um, I was telling Dorina that Young Living, my shirt, my shirt today, Young Living has a whole vitality line. So meaning that you can ingest them. And I ingest my oils regularly. Um, this is what the label looks like. It's a white label. And um, this is citrus fresh. This is actually a great oil. It's a blend of all of the citruses with mm. some spearmint in it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, this in the diffuser is actually one of my favorites. And this Vitality oil, I like to put in my water and ingest it because um, citruses are high in D-limonene, which is high in antioxidants. Mm. So we all have these free radicals roaming around our bodies and the antioxidants are what, like Pac-Man, chomp them up to get rid of them. Yeah. So a drop in your water is a great way to do that. Um, so I was telling you, Dorina, that I cook with these. Yeah. The other day I was making chili and it, I needed cloves and I didn't have any, but I have clove, I don't think I have it with me, I have clove vitality oil so I just put a drop in my chili and you don't need a lot because these are 100% therapeutic grade oils. Nice. So 
you know, you are, there is nothing else in them. It's just the oil. A lot of companies will um, extract with chemicals to get a higher yield, but in doing so, they ruin the integrity of the oil. And the FDA, while they don't regulate the essential oil businesses, they do have requirements. And their requirement is that you only have to have 5% of an oil in a bottle. And the rest then can be fillers, chemicals, synthetics. So you really, really need to know the farming practices of the company that you are with. That's really important. Um, I have been fortunate enough to go to Young Living's conventions and to visit one of their farms. So I get to see the whole process, soup to nuts, um, even how they distill. It's just steam distillation or with our citruses, it's cold press. So like when you squeeze the rind of a lemon, you see the oils, that's how they get their oils. They cold press the rinds to get the oil and nothing else. So it's 100% in our bottles. So that's why you're able to ingest the Vitality line and cook with it. I like to put pepper it. in my brownies. So delicious, everybody loves that. Mm. Um, so other things to do to help with your mood, I know everybody um, knows lavender, and but did you know that there are more bottles of lavender produced oil than there are, there is lavender? Actual, no kidding. No kidding. So that kind of indicates that a lot of lavender out there is synthetically made. So oh, that's, wow. yeah, it's really important. And a lot of the lavender too, another way to tell is it smells very sweet. When you smell ours, there's a huge difference. You can- in Yeah, no, I love, I love the lavender oil. Yeah, instead of doing a taste test, you can do a smell test. <laughs> so lavender is great for calming. So if you're feeling like if you're having a hard time sleeping at night or you're feeling, you know, just a little on edge, all you, you can put this in your diffuser. You can, some people like to make um, a little spray. You can get a little spray bottle. Yeah. I like to put like a pinch of salt in it, like a little salt, so the oil can bind with the salt because salt and water don't mix. So you put the salt in with the oil. In your spray bottle? Yes. Okay. And, and I have like a little, this isn't a spray bottle, but um, just like a bottle this size, mm -hmm. a little spray top on it. Yeah, you know, I like to spray it on my, I like to spray it on my bed. Yep, exactly. And, uh, exactly I just, where I was going. I do cheese, it's like yum. Yes. That's one of my favorites. Yes, and you can spray it on your pillow. You can spray mm -hmm. it on your blankets, your sheets, and it just helps everything calm down. Another really good trick is the bottom of your foot. So, you know, reflexology, there's, you know, the organs on the bottom of your feet. Actually, your hand is another spot. Right. But on the bottom of your foot, vitality, or not vitality, the bottom of your foot, the Vitaflex points on your feet the back of your, say this is your toe, your big toe, the back of your toe right here is where uh, the point is for your brain. Oh. So if you put oils on your big toes, I do it every night. I have oils that I use. There's so many different oils, but um, the oils that I use, I put on the back of my big toes every single night to help calm my brain down. You do it about 20 minutes to a half hour before you go to sleep and it just calms the brain down, wow. calms you down so you can I get do that because my brain is going 24/7. Yeah. I go to sleep thinking it used to be years ago I'd go to sleep thinking something and then I wanted to remember it in the morning completely forgot it cuz I'd had a good night's sleep and it just right. went away. Now yeah. I go to bed thinking, I wake up thinking and I'm like on constant mode. Yeah. You need and to yeah. Calm down. Brain down. down. Well, another good thing is um, we have this. This is really nice. Oh. We have it's called Calm yeah, and it's a CBD roller. So we Ooh. partnered with a company called Nature's Ultra, who they practice. They have the same exact farming practices that Young Living does. So their soil, like ours, better than organic because they don't plant in any soil that has been planted in before. So they are um, 
A hundred percent. This is, there is no THC in our um, CBD products, oh, wow. which is a big deal because people who do want to use CBD and, you know, are working and are nervous about being drug tested for it, this has none. So okay. we have the calm roller. So it has lavender in it. Um, let me see. Lavender, primrose, uh, rose hip oil. So everything, oh, and orange oil. So oh, yeah. it said that orange is uplifting, but actually, it, and it is, but it's also good for people for sleep. My son loves diffusing orange before he goes to bed. That's yeah, like I, I love that. Things to do. So there's, so what makes our CBD different too is that a little chemistry, but when you take the THC out, you're taking something out called terpenes. And terpenes are what the constituent in the oils that give them their medicinal um, profile and also smell. So by adding in our oils, you're adding back in terpenes. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So um, it's it's um, not full spectrum. It's smart spectrum, we call it. Oh, okay. uh, so we have this and we also have drops as well. So this is cool. And what do you do with those? Do you take those internally or you put them on yourself? Well, we're not allowed to say that you take them internally. Okay. But for some reason, there is a differentiation where you can sublingually put it under your tongue and it's not the same as ingestion. Okay. So you can put it under your tongue and hold it oh, under your tongue. Writing, right? And it just, you know, goes in your bloodstream that way without cool. fully ingesting it. Okay. Um, so we have that and I was telling you we have so many, so many oils. Um, but this is a fan favorite. This is called Stress Away. How oh, yeah. is that? Right, so um, this comes in a roll-on. You can roll it on, or we also have just a regular bottle because people do like to um, diffuse it in their diffuser. Um, this, a lot of people have dubbed vacation in a bottle because of the way it smells. Um, there is vanilla in here, there's um, lime in here, copaiba in here, which copaiba is a tree oil. So if you take any tree oils, if you think about a tree, the roots, right, are in the ground and it's very grounding. So all tree oils are very grounding oils. So pine, copaiba, Idaho blue spruce, Idaho balsam fir, all very, very grounding oils. Would that be good for the kids that are home studying right now mm -hmm. that are stressing yeah. out over? Absolutely. Like my daughter, you know, she's a nursing student. And so she's yeah. got lab classes and all these practicals she's had to take online. Mm -hmm. She comes down just freaking out. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, that uh, would probably, I would imagine, for all the kids. Very helpful. Yeah. Very helpful. And, and like, and for anybody who just doesn't feel grounded right now, yeah. you know, it's, it's a tough time we're in. It is. Um, I think a lot of people have a lot of anxiety and a lot of fears about, you know, what the future is going to look like and, and everything. And, you know, I have found using our essential oils to be, um, they've helped us in a lot of different ways. And emotionally is a big one because out of your five senses, I keep looking at you, but I'm looking the other way and it's throwing me off. I'm just going to look straight ahead. Um, out of our five senses, our sense of smell is the only sense that stirs up memory and emotion. It really does. It does. So, yeah. I mean, if you think exactly. about it, you know, you think about a pot of sauce, right, on the stove. Yep, exactly. It reminds you exactly. of grandma's on a Sunday, right? Or somebody's cologne. Oh, my God, Uncle Walter, like, I remember his cologne. It just brings up those memories. And um, essential oils do that because it's connected into your limbic system and it that's where your memories and everything and your emotions are stored. So there's a whole emotional side to the, you know, inhalation of essential oils. And it can be for some people bring up good memories, but for other people, not good memories. Yeah. 
Um, and, and, but you can use essential oils to help with that, actually. If, if you do have trauma in your past, there's been a lot of people that have worked through their, their trauma and their bad memories using essential oils. Creating new memories. Creating new memories. You know, and talking you about smelling things, you know, and I say the same thing in my cooking. I always tell people, you're, you before you even put the food in your mouth, you're eating first with your eyes yeah. and your nose. Yeah. You know, I, everybody makes fun of me because as soon as I get something, not my phone, but I get something and I, and I um, immediately smell it. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I got to inhale it. <laughs> it's my cappuccino. I always, always take my food first because it just, you know. Yeah. Sometimes I don't even want a cup of coffee, but smelling it just makes me happy. And there's all these different things that, you know, it really is true. I, I, you know, I think a lot of people think that the essential oil thing is such a hippie thing. Yeah. In fact, um, you know, I did some research as well. And, you know, I know that, you know, essential oils have been being used for over 5,000 years. They're in the Bible. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's something that everybody, not just, you know, um, you know, string and kumbaya, singing Kumbaya around a campfire are people <laughs> using essential oils. It is a mainstream common thing that yeah. most people, a lot of people are still just getting to know. Yes. And it's such, I've been, you know, using oils for, it's over 15 years myself and um, I love it. And it does make a difference in my sleep when I spray my lavender. My daughter just actually, it's funny because I said that you were coming on. I said, yeah, she's going to talk about essential oils. She goes, you know what smell always reminds me of you, mom? And I'm like, what? <laughs> Lavender. <laughs> that's in her memory bank now. Lavender. It, it really is. Remind yeah. her of that's really. So let me ask you a couple questions. Mm -hmm. Um, so if somebody just watches the news <laughs> and starts freaking out right now, just because you know that's what it does, it just immediately sends us into stress yeah. mode right now because of everybody's worried. You know, they talk about this many more cases and all this kind of stuff with the COVID. So what is something? What would be a go-to for like right this second? I'm totally stressed out. Yeah, um, there's so many. Um, my first suggestion is to turn the news off. Well, yeah, I agree with that. Just turn it off. Um, but and try and truly try not to really watch too much of it. We know what's going on. Keep yourself updated, but but don't obsess over watching the news because it's not you know it's it's just not healthy for us. Oh, I agree a hundred percent. I'm well, just coming up with a, a yeah. Idea. Yeah. every now and then we're jumping on because we want to kind of keep a little updated. So yes. what would you say to somebody who, you know, or is worried about their job, just an instant thing, you know, they got a bad phone call or whatever. Yeah. What do you go to that something that is pungent that works quick for somebody who is having a, a panic attack right now? That's kind of a little bit of a difficult question. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Please because do. everybody's body chemistry is different. Okay. So um, lavender for you may work like that, but maybe lavender for me doesn't really do it for me. Um, okay, I, so it's a matter of playing around and finding what your what your happy smell is. This peace and calming. Mm. Mm, I could bathe in peace and calming. So peace and calming for me immediately. This is what I diffuse next to my bed every night when I go to sleep. Gotcha. It just, for me, it, it brings it all down for me. You know, and again, lavender will bring it all down for you. And because our body chemistry is different, different oils do different things for people. And there are some oils, I will tell you, um, that maybe you smell and you're like, oh, dear God in heaven, that is God awful. Um, but... If you use it every day for, say, a month or so, believe it or not, that smell will change and you will actually then like that smell, which means that there was something going on chemically that your body needed to process. And then by using it consistently, all of a sudden the change, uh, the smell changes. Mm -hmm. So for those people that, you know, really need something, I would suggest, honestly, there's so many tree oils. Like I said, they're very grounding and very calming. I would make a practice of using those oils daily. Okay. Just to help ground you and keep you more calm. So basically, if you get into the practice of using these oils on a regular basis, mm -hmm. then you don't even need that 
oh my gosh, I have a stress moment because you're kind of going to keep yourself in a, yeah. In an equilibrium in a sense. Yes. Like yeah, I said, like, I, I use, peace and calming comes in the roller too. So I keep this, I keep, you know, my son you just wearing your purse like spare perfume. Yes, I do. I wear it as perfume. We have another oil. This actually is a great suggestion. I don't have it right on me right now. It's called Valor. And oh, if I have that one, it's one of my favorites. I it's do. It's mine too. And I wear it as perfume because I love it so much. Yeah. Um, but Valor is a blend. And um, they call it courage in a bottle. So if you think of the word valor and what that word means, it really does help with um, any anxiety or nervousness that comes up. So it is a great oil um, to use to help you through those situations. I wear it all the time. So I feel like for the most part, I'm kind of a chill <laughs> person because I, I have it, I keep it in my bag, you know? Mm -hmm behind my ears, back of my neck. Another good place to put oils um, is the back of your neck, the, uh, your brain stem. Yeah. Great place to put oils. And what I do too, sometimes people think I'm a little crazy. I literally drip them on the top of my head, on the crown of my head. Um, so, I, you know, I yeah, have, we talked about the oil Believe. Mm -hmm. That I did that this morning. I took my Believe. Yeah, I like that one. Stripped it on the top of my head. I have we have a lot of oils like gratitude and acceptance and you know um surrender and release. So, you know, there's so many things. Yeah, I know a lot of those blends have been, you know, they're tried and true. They really are. I know that um one of the things talk about the back of the neck I like is um the peppermint and mm. um, orange. orange. Yeah. Uh, to me, yeah. two of those together and just up here in the back of the neck and, and, and into like the bottom of my hair. And it just sends this like, I don't know what it is, man. It's like magic. Well, peppermint is awesome because it has so many uses. But one of the uses that's great for the back of your neck is um, it helps with alertness and focus. So, and if you're feeling tired and a little sluggish, Take a whiff of some peppermint and put yeah, some in your really neck, and you're like, okay, I'm ready to go. Another great use on the back of your neck is if you are hot. You know, if anybody's having hot flashes, um, or you know, it's a warm day outside, or you just exercised um, and you can't cool down. Put a little. It's like a little personal air conditioner. Yeah. So it's it, it's so versatile. It's great. It aids in digestion. Um, it's great if your head is kind of going like this, you know, um, the first time I ever tried that blend, I had a horrible headache Yeah, and it, and, um, and it was just like, wow, it, it, it just sent me somewhere else and it was, the headache was gone. I just felt completely turned around. Yeah. It was really nice. It is great. Um, it's great for that use. And I like to put some on my thumb mm -hmm. and push it to the roof of my mouth. What the peppermint? Yeah, that oh, wow. that will help that. But also, if you're congested, it just helps open everything up. And I know mm -hmm. things are blooming outside, so I know a yeah. lot of people could, you know, that would help. Right. So that's a great use for peppermint too. Cool. So that's. I mean, well, that a lot of good tips we've gotten here and luckily everybody can uh, rewind this later and um, play it over and listen to some more your wisdom over again. Um, um, I did post on here. They're in the comments. Um, Lynn has her email address. If you want to email her with questions or mm -hmm. talk about ordering um, spoils of oils on Instagram, you yeah. can follow her there. And, um, and I also posted her the web link if you want to just place an order, but I recommend you contact her because you know what? A big, big thing about oils isn't just about buying them. It's knowing how to use them. And yeah. Lynn is really, really good at explaining it, telling you which ones, you know, recommending which ones to use. Um, and uh, I guarantee you she won't steer you wrong. So I really do think that, um, you know, this is something wonderful and you can use these same oils in some of the, um, like the the things we did the other day with the bath salts, you can yes. make them too. Yes. There's a lot of different things. Lynn is local here in uh, Florham Park, New Jersey. So if you want to meet her, you know, sometimes she went well, not well, now, but <laughs> virtually. Virtually, um, social distancing right now. 
but she really truly is always ready to help teach um, what to do with these things. I am. So, so contact her. I didn't put your phone number up. Um, they can okay. email you. I'd rather. Yeah, that's that. fine. And then, yeah. um, and then we will, uh, you know, see what we can do. We're all trying to help each other here right now. You know, I'm trying to profile people and do these little interview things um, to help fellow small businesses and also just to give people out there um, some information, something to do, something to learn, um, to take away from the monotony and the fear mongering of watching the news. So <laughs> instead, we yeah. are, you know, yes, that. this is where this comes in. Stress there away. Stress away. Stress okay. away. So anyway, um, well, Lynn, thank you so much for giving us your time. And um, hopefully, you know, we'll be doing this some more and we'll have you come in another time for I don't know anything else. Well, maybe we'll talk about some of the oils that we can use in the cooking. Yes, let's do a cooking show with oils. Let's. Okay. All, we right. All right, good. Well, you All have right. a great day, Lynn. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. You too. Take Thank care. You. Bye. Bye. Okay. Wasn't that fun? So we all learned something new. Um, I hope you guys um enjoyed that and that you uh you know, you know, learn something that you can do right now, especially during these stressful times. I hope that it's um, you know, was helpful to you. And if you are interested in using the essential oils, you can contact Lynn and um, she will be happy to not only just sell them to you, but in, inform you and educate you on using them. Cause that's really what it's all about. If you know what you're doing, it's helpful. If you just go and buy oils because, Oh, wow, this sounds cool. And then you, just put them in the shelf and you're like, Oh, I don't really know what to do with this. And should I use it or should I not waste it or whatever? Because it's these little bottles, those little bottles go a long way. Let me tell you, drop here, drop there. It's really good. So, um, you know, I really hope you all appreciate that. So call Lynn. So in the meantime, um, all right, I just got a little bit of time left here. Um, but I wanted to share with you guys something just really funny. Uh, this has nothing to do with lemons, nothing to do with essential oils, but you know, as a lot of us are doing right now, I know a lot of people are cleaning out their houses and going through their junk. And, um, I was in the, we were in the basement. I found this box. So I'm going to show you what I found. Don't laugh, but these are from when I was a kid. I found my Smurfs. <laughs> I've got, you know, Papa Smurf and I've got, I mean, I have a whole bunch of Smurfs and you know, it's funny. I don't know when the last time I saw these things were They're in this little box and you know, they're kind of a little dirty. I'm going to clean them up. So I've, I've got an idea of what I'm going to do with them because you know, I think all of us have these little memories. So this is not a smell, <laughs> but, um, it is something that, you know, I collected these when I was, I don't know, must have been middle school or something. And um, and I just, or maybe younger, I don't know. I don't even remember what year. I, but I do remember walking to the local, to the local toy store and, you know, buying one at a time, you know, that was my thing I would save up for. And so what do we do with this? I don't want to call it junk, but these memories, what do we do with these? Um you know, how do we save, I don't want to just, I mean, I really don't have a shelf to put them on. I don't want to just keep them in the box. Although it is kind of one of those cool things. It'll be in a box in the attic and someday the grandkids will be going rummaging through the attic and they'll say, Oh, what are these? You know, Smurfs. Um, but I'm actually thinking I have a bunch of these shadow box, um, like frames, you know, they're about yay big. I have one I'll share with you guys another time, but, um, Actually, no, I'll show it to you right now. Hold on. Okay. So this is a shadow box I made some years ago. It's, okay, let's see if I can get it without the glare. So this has rocks in the bottom. There we go. And it's got two photos. This is me and Pat, my hubby, Pasquale, um, sitting on the beach in Carlsbad, California, right after we first got married. And that beach was all rocks. And we collected, I had given him this chess set for his birthday, and we collected these cool rocks because they're all, let's see if I can open this. These are the coolest rocks. But they came in all these different colors, and we found a bunch of flat ones. And we, we got them, a bunch of them in the, in the colors, and we used them to play checkers with on the chess set. In the meantime, now they're in the bottom of this shadow box with two photos of us sitting on that beach. 
a lot of fun. So I was kind of thinking it might be fun to take a bunch of these things and put them in the bottom and maybe throw in a couple of pictures from childhood. I don't know. Sounds like a fun idea to me because that's I have actually a bunch of these a bunch of these frames and um and it's really you know kind of cool. So I figure, what the heck, right? Is that an maybe an idea? And then put it down in the basement somewhere, but at least it'll be on the wall. It'll be somewhat displayed, but not something that I have to really take up a whole lot of space with. So that's what I'm thinking of doing with that. I don't know. You guys think that's a good uh, thing to do. So anyway. And then the other thing I'm kind of excited about, I was going through some other junk. My mother will love this. I found some old patterns that I think I got these. Honestly, I think I got them at a yard sale. They're for aprons. Ha ha. Anybody want to make me an apron? So um, I'm thinking I might uh, pull out the sewing machine and make some aprons or uh, something or send these to somebody to make them for me. Maybe a, my mother. Um, so anyway, because I have all my cool black aprons that I love, you know, I tend to uh, wear a lot more black. I'll tell you a funny story uh, before I leave you. So I was in Italy last year, or many times last year. But, um, you know, all the back and forth I've been doing is, uh, you know, I'm packing and taking stuff. I've got stuff I leave there at the house and stuff here. But honestly, to pack easy, you know, my black pants and my black shirts it's just easy to pack. It's easy to dress. And on top of that, we all know the stupid secret of wear a little black and you look a little thinner. I don't know. It's an illusion, but that's the way it goes. So here I was in Old Village, Italy. And this one evening I was walking up to my house and there's a little bench at the bottom of the hill. And there's a bunch of ladies that like sit there at night. They're at the top of the piazza and they kind of sit and they look down and they just, it's their little hangout and they sit and chit chat. And I always, you know, stop and chat with them for a minute. So this one evening, um, there was this one older lady sitting there and a couple others. And I sat down next to her. It was a spot for me. And we're chatting. And she goes, let me tell you something. She goes, I, I got to ask you something. She goes, is your husband? And as soon as she said that, I knew exactly what she was asking me. Because I was all in black. And it's still very typical over there to be wearing all black while you went, you know, when you're in mourning and pretty much they're in mourning from the day their spouse dies until, you know, until they die. The ladies anyway, wear black pretty much the rest of their lives. So I'm like, no, no, no. And so then I told her, I just wear it because it makes me look a little thinner. And then she started laughing. I swear she thought she was going to fall off the chair. She just thought that was the funniest thing ever. So anyway, so um, that's why most of the time, but today I got to tell you, I'm wearing my, wait a minute, my mom, a shark shirt, because you know, I believe that I'm a shark. And the reason being is because you see, I used to teach kids, I, of course I'm a 35 year soccer coach. And one of the games that we used to play was sharks and minnows. And you'd hold two kids back and all the rest of the kids are running around with their little soccer balls. And then you release the two sharks and they've got to go steal the soccer balls of the others. Well, as little kids will do, some walk, some run, some stand, some walk, some sit down, whatever. So, of course, as a coach, I'm like, come on, let's go. Got to keep moving. You know, and the sharks, you know, they're like, they chase somebody. They don't want to chase them anymore. I'm like, what happens to a shark when they stop swimming? Do you know? Does anybody know the answer? Quick, come on. What happens to a shark when it stops swimming? It dies. Sharks need to constantly be moving. They don't sleep. So that's me. I'm not going to die anytime soon because I'm a shark. I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to keep coming to you, bringing you stuff, sharing stuff, you know, sharing my mission of getting people back to the table um, because I do think that right now is the perfect time. Learn how to cook. Bring whatever family is in your home at the moment that you're allowed to see to the table. Practice your recipes. Learn your heritage. Know where you're from. Not everybody's Italian like me, but you know what? Everybody comes from somewhere. We all have a heritage that is somewhere else. America is a beautiful place made up of people from other places. And instead of all smushing together, like I keep saying, we are not a melting pot. We should be an antipasto platter where each thing shines on its own. I'm the mozzarella, just so you know. Had a little chubby and shiny and white. Okay, anyway. And no. Um, it's my favorite. And um, But each thing shines on its own, but together it's a beautiful platter. That's what we should be. So 
learn how to cook. I'll teach you how to cook. I'll teach you recipes. I'll give you my tips and tricks in the process. But in the meantime, learn your heritage and start finding recipes from where you come from. And if you don't already cook them, get them, learn them, bring them to your family table and encourage your kids to know where they're from originally, because that is the beauty. Okay. A patchwork quilt is much more pretty than much more pretty, much prettier than um, just a plain old one color blanket. Right. So let's all appreciate what we are what we have, who we are, share it with others. Because I'll tell you, I love going to somebody's house who knows where they're from and brings out the foods of their culture. That is awesome. I hope you all enjoyed this. Um, I will be back on tomorrow. So same time, same place. My kitchen to you. Ciao, ciao.